I was in Russell County Sheriff's Department or in jail with the sheriffs. I was beat and tased and naked the whole time I was there. And I want everyone to know. I feel like I might not even be here on this earth much longer because more than a few occasions, my whole tire has came off my car three times while I was driving down the road. And then one time it came off my trailer and just the other day, the day after my paperwork was supposed to be turned in to court, someone took bolts off my tire. Sorry. I have a problem with thinking of the words that I want to say because I have fibromyalgia as a result of going through all this. Let me give you a background because it has a lot to do with things that have happened in the past. My husband passed away over five years ago. Uh, he was military really has nothing to do with it, but I was questioned while I was in jail about my husband's death by my aunt that has never questioned me ever. She's seen me at every holiday, has never questioned me about my husband's death ever, and this is the beginning of my story. I also suffer from major depression, and it was... Sunday after Veterans Day and at church all the veterans stood up and everyone clapped for them and my husband was not there and I know that it sounds crazy and I have five children I'm not sure if I said that yet but I was to the point to where I did not want to be on this earth anymore I wanted to be with my husband I had been taking at, in a class where the people in the class all said, it's a group, not a class, I don't think of the right words to say sometimes, and it's called Suicide Survivors, and everyone in the class had children or spouses that passed away by suicide, and one of the ladies said, her son passed away. He took eight Xanax. And at the time, I lived on Lake Hardy, and I decided that I was took I took eight Xanax, and I was going to get in the lake and go under. And I took the eight Xanax, and I didn't feel like it was working fast enough. I was still coherent, and so I got in my car. And was going to the store to get some alcohol to help me. And it was Sunday. There's no alcohol in Georgia, so I had to go to Alabama. When I finally got to Alabama, driving down the road, it just, with a snap of a finger, all of a sudden I had no idea where I was. Didn't know anything. I didn't even, my mind was gone. So I called my boyfriend at the time and I just told him that I pulled over at a CVS and uh, read the, the road sign and he somehow got there and we were arguing in the parking lot and a lady came up to us and said I'm a police officer, and you're causing problems. I want you to leave right now. And there was no way by then that I could drive. I didn't want to leave. And I said, yes, ma'am. We're, we're talking. We're about to leave. And she, the, the longer she stood there, the ruder she got. She said, no, you need to leave now, blah, blah. And in the... It's really ugly what I said, but I said it. I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I had took eight Xanax. Should have killed me. I told her to quit showing off in front of her kids and leave. But I said it in uglier words. And it's 
soon as I did, she got on her phone and she said, I have a problem. Get over here now. And the police were there within five minutes. She wouldn't leave. She said that the police cannot talk to me because I needed to drive off. She stood there for at least five minutes saying, leave, drive off, leave. So I didn't know what to do. So I started to drive off. As soon as I got out of the parking lot, the policeman that was sitting there waiting on me pulled me over. And he, I can't remember if he gave me a breathalyzer, but I had nothing to drink. On the ticket that I got, it said that I denied the breathalyzer. But anyways, he arrested me. He took me to jail. And as soon as I got there, uh, they tried to give me a breathalyzer. But, and the only reason I even remember this part is because I saw a video of it that I can't show you. Um, I was beat. I was, did not fight in any way. And if I show you that video, I will be arrested because of our government. But, my seatbelt on. I can't remember to put my seatbelt on. And I remember I'll put it on. I can't remember anything. It's part of my fibromyalgia. But so I go to take the breathalyzer and the guy just shoves me down to the ground and starts choking me. And it, this is all on video. I have pictures of it. I'm not allowed to share the video. And so then the, another lady comes in. I did not fight back ever. The other lady punches me in the face. And so anyways, they take me back to the room in the back. They take all my clothes off. I was naked the whole time I was there. And these two women beat the hell out of me. And they tased me for over 10 minutes. I know it was longer than that. The video ended. They didn't want to show them coming out with my clothes. But that's what it was. I was naked the whole time. The women tased me from my privates to my knees over 10 times. I had burn marks. <laughs> so, in the middle of them beating me, the guy that arrested me, the police officer, cannot stop it. <clears throat> I don't know, he probably could have, but he did not stop it. Not saying I don't want anything to happen to him, but he quit the next day and skipped town. He left the city, didn't want to be a part of it, I don't blame him, and just left town. <clears throat> Anyways, after the beating, they took me to the nurse's office. Naked. Three men came into the room where I'm at, butt naked, no bra, no panties, no nothing. Three men. It took three men to do that. They put <clears throat> a blanket over me and took me to the nurse's station. As soon as I walked into the nurse's station, the nurse that I think still works there tells me at least that her boobs are real. She's commenting on my nakedness and how I looked while I was naked. And then my nurse, not my nurse, my aunt, the aunt that I still love, I don't know why she did it, my aunt comes in and questions me about my husband's death. Well, why? Is it over? Yeah, I'm sorry, that's my son, my 18 year old son, telling me to hurry up. I guess he thinks my video is boring, but hopefully somebody that can help me will watch it. Where was I at, Ryan? Don't do that. Teresa, Teresa. Ter Aunt Teresa. Who I um I also know I know that she knew that I was beat up. Didn't care. Called my mother. Told my mother that I tried to kill myself while I was in jail. And that's that comes later after all this. So. Anyways, I'm in the nurse's station, and the three men that brought me in there are standing around, and one of them pulls a big clunk of hair out. I mean, it's just a big ball of hair. And they all look at each other and start laughing. That's how these people are trained. They beat the hell out of people, and they think it's funny. 
and they just throw the hair on the ground and then the lady gives me a shot uh, some kind of tranquilizer I was told later by attorneys that it is something that military uses when they go to um, war it makes them forget what happened to them so they gave me that on top of what I already took they knew that I was took something they didn't know what so So anyways, after that, I'm taking it, I took it into a different room. I didn't tell you about the first room. The first room, actually the first room when I went in the first time, this, what, Ryan, is the video can't go any longer? Uh, 11 minutes, really? Yes. So, I go into a room. You're making me not remember where I'm at. The room. What room? Okay, the first that. room I go into, all yeah, the rooms. Whatever. They oh. have feces all over. Poop. Somebody took their poop. I don't know if they took it out of the toilet or just pooped in their hand. And they wiped it on the walls, all the way around the walls in every room. Every cell had poop on the walls and the floor. And they drew a logo on the wall with a circle with like a pitchfork in the middle. And they put these logos on every room. Nobody cleans it. They leave the poop on the walls when you go in there. Anyway, it's the first cell they put me in. The uh, this is even this is right after they do the breathalyzer. Put me in this room, and I don't know if they told this girl that was there. It was a prisoner in there. As soon as I walk in the room, the first room, the girl punches me, and I know. I don't, I don't know, but. Anyways, I didn't even tell. The girl from CVS, when I was doing the breathalyzer, was behind a window in the room, practically laughing at me, saying, I got you, this is what you get for talking to me, like that. And I have a cousin that used to work there that has told me that they train the people to do that. Every time the women would go to punch me, the guy would open the door so that you couldn't see them punching me. But what they didn't realize is the door had a window in the middle. And if you look in the window, you could see I was choked, I was punched, I was pulled around by my hair the whole time. My body was bruised from head to toe. And I felt like, I can't say that I was sexually abused, but I was butt naked and these women were tasing my privates. The doctor put it all in there. When I went to the hospital, the doctor said that I should, I didn't even think, I didn't even care. At that time I was hurting so bad that I didn't care to call the police. I was scared of the police. Even now, when I see a policeman or a sheriff, I cringe. Anytime anything comes up with a government, it scares me. And for a long time, I felt, and I know they were, somebody was messing with my tires. They want to put it like I'm crazy. And they, after that, after the whole jail incident, I didn't even tell you. I died while I was in jail. I was dead. The nurse came in there, and I don't remember, I remember someone, like, the nurse started freaking out because I was, had been in there two hours longer than I was supposed to. They're only supposed to hold you, I think, 24 hours. They couldn't wake me up. They couldn't wake me up because I was dead, and I saw heaven, and to all the people that don't believe in God, start believing because he's real God is real and I saw heaven and I know everybody's heaven may not be like my heaven but I was told I need to stay here and I need to take care of my children I can't wait until I get to heaven and even if I tell you about my heaven some people joke or they might think it's but I know heaven is real. 
and it has many rooms. I don't know if I should talk about the home. No, you should keep going. All right. One of the rooms was my mansion, and I saw my husband. So all the people out there that think that if you kill yourself, you go to hell, that's not true. Heaven is real. Heaven is real. And people that kill themselves, not saying all of them, this is just my husband. God loves everyone. And he forgets. Hey, they're not going to put this one fucking in. Right. Shush. I don't care about that. Yeah, and I don't care about the do? news. I am... I, this has happened a year and a half ago. You know what has happened since then? Nothing. The government does not care about me. They don't care about what happened in Russell County. Those people are still working there. They're still working here, there. They're beating the hell out of whoever they want to, whenever they want to. And they learn how to hide more behind cameras. And it needs to stop. The people need to... Yeah, that's a good end spot. No, it's not. They're not ended. Hurry up. I'm getting tired of all I don't this know what else I wanted to say. What do I want to say? I don't know. Anyways, Friday, my attorney quit. Uh, and I know it sounds really weird. I feel like he was paid off. Maybe he wasn't. I don't know. He doesn't care. Nobody... I'm hoping with this video to find someone that does care, that wants justice. We need justice. This is America. We're not supposed to be thrown in jail and beat and questioned about things. If they wanted to know about my husband's death, they should have got me, took me somewhere before then. I would love to tell people about what happened to my husband because it's not right. He served 16 years in the military honorably. He was the E-7 and he came back from Afghanistan and he had PTSD. He had it bad. And I gave birth to my daughter and he was supposed to leave a week later to go to Germany. And he did not go because I could not go. I could not just, I could have, but I didn't, and I should have, but I didn't. Things were not good in America. I was scared and did not want to go to another country with my husband that had PTSD that could just, you know, was not, I don't even want to go through with the, what all was going on with him, but... Something needs to change. The government is controlling us. They control our lives. I, my, I have 19 acres in Harris County, and with this fibromyalgia, it causes problems. I can't remember things. And I was supposed to apply for conservation, I think is the name of it, or something. Where my tax is, my neighbor has 27 acres. They pay $90 a year. I forgot I, the date that you had to apply by, and I applied the day after. So I'm just pointing out that this thing that happened to me is huge. It's not just hospital bills. I was in the hospital three times the first week. I had a broken arm. I had huge bruises all over my head. It was like something you see on a cartoon. My whole face, my whole body, I looked like a cow. Pain like it, I have never experienced. I have not gotten, no one, no one cares. No one said they were sorry. My aunt has not, my aunt, since then, my aunt has not been to any holiday function. Which people say, why do you care? I am an emotional person and it bothers me because I loved my family. I loved my family. And I still love my family. I'll always love them. But I've learned <laughs> you can't trust people, family or not. You can't trust anyone. And it says it if you. <laughs> You shouldn't trust people, and it says it in the Bible. Put all your trust in God, and that's what I'm doing, and hopefully I'll get some kind of result from this. Um, I need an attorney if anybody knows one. 
there's a video, I mean, even my attorney said that there is no question that you got beat in jail. They're not questioning that at all. They're questioning that I'm asking for a certain amount of money that my husband, I know this sounds crazy, I feel like all of this happens for a reason, and God knows our life before it happens. And all of it that happened in jail happened for a reason. And part of it was my husband was taking care of me. He was taking care of me financially. He's taking care of my kids financially. And I'm not going to accept anything less than that. I talked to him there. And they don't want to compensate. They think that I... I hurt every day. I cry every day. Ryan, do I cry? I cry for 10 hours or more. Why do I cry? I don't even know. I'm just hurting. I'm hurting in pain, mentally, physically, all of it. Taking care of five kids, the government, all of it. I didn't tell you more. the rest of the story. Since then, I have been kicked out of two houses. Two houses. I don't think that it is something that has just happened. I think there's a reason behind it, and I almost know it has to do with going to jail. Those people that beat the hell out of me, they have families. They think that it's okay because maybe I was said something mean to them. It's not okay. I was kicked out of Cocoa Lake because I had a cat. Right. That's not right. I was there, what? I wasn't even there. I got kicked out after 60 days. Before that, I lived in Lake Harding, and my realtor, I didn't even say his name, but I anyways, was our roof leaked. They never fixed it the whole time. I never even complained. The day after we left, they fixed the roof. But anyways, I offered to pay for another six months up front, the whole six months, and they told me no. Then I go to live somewhere else, and the neighbor that was a prison guard runs over my dog. Killed my dog right in front of me, 10 foot in front of me. All these, I don't know that it's all the prison guards, but a lot of them, I, they have these jobs because they want to control something. They want to beat the hell out of me or put me down, put my body, my naked body down. I hope that lady feels better. The nurse, a nurse, why do you go to school to be a nurse to take care of people? Not to tell them, ha ha, you have fake boobs and everybody in the freaking sheriff's department is looking at you through the window. That is not what people, they need to, people need to be trained. And those people are trained. They're trained to think that they can beat the hell out of people. This is stop. If things, this is what, I have one more thing to say. If things do not change, if the government does not compensate me something for beating the hell out of me and for my body and for my kids have to, I could not hold my baby. My baby was a little baby. I can't hold my baby. Then I will put that video on the internet and then the judge could put me in jail for it. I don't even care anymore. They could beat the fuck out of me. They could take my fucking life. I know God is looking out for me. Excuse me. And my husband is. So, either I'm going to be compensated and my family's going to be taken care of. I'm going to put that video on the internet. And then you can put me in jail and beat the fuck out of me. That's how it is. That's the, the end.